Right, what we have here is a Commodore 64 uh, C2M tape deck. Uh, it's not in too much trouble. Uh, it's not too dirty, but we're going to give it a bit of a clean up. Uh, I'm going to disassemble it, make sure the heads are aligned properly and give you a quick guide on how to do that. Now, uh, we do, I am going to use a scope to show you um, how the heads are aligned. Not everybody has that uh, or everybody has a scope uh, in order to do that. There is another method which I'll also show you, which involves um, turning the sound chip on a bread bin uh, and you can actually hear um, the, it's not particularly accurate, but you can hear the tape uh, noise coming through or the sound from the tape drive coming through the 64, which can help you align, align these systems. But uh, what we're going to do first of all is we'll take this apart. Um, I'll have a look inside, we'll change the belt, I can show you the, uh, the belt that you need to, uh, to, to change it over. We only change the main drive belt, we don't actually drive the, uh, well I don't change the uh, belt to the counter, it's not really necessary, it's not particularly, uh, doesn't, it's not a high precision thing, but the belt that drives the um, capstan and the actual wheels is quite important. So what we also, what I'm also going to show you is you need a few things you need in order to repair these. Uh, you need a toothbrush, which is uh, I use to give the case a good scrub. Now I use this, which is a, a cutoff from a scouring pad. Um, I use that to clean the capstan, the actual roller, just to roughen it up a little bit um, and then give it a wipe off with uh, some ISO. Uh, also again, cotton buds. These are, these are engineering cotton buds, uh, long, uh, long sticks, but you know, Q-tips or whatever you happen to have will, will, uh, will work fine. Um, now this is quite important. It's uh, isopropyl alcohol. Um, it's quite important, it actually removes all of the um, rubbish that comes off the tapes um, of on, and, and accumulates on the head, all the magnetic stuff and accumulates on the heads. That's quite important to get rid of that. And to clean the case up, I've been using a uh, foam cleaner, but somebody sort of uh, uh, led me onto this stuff, which is called elbow grease, and it's brilliant. It's really, really good. Um, you can get it from the range, and I think Poundland do it as well. Uh, you can also search for it on the web if you need to, uh, but this stuff's really, really good. Bit, sm <laughs> bit smelly, but it's uh, really, really good for cleaning up these cases, as I'll show you. So, well, first of all, we'll take the, uh, take the deck apart. Grab myself a screwdriver. Just the four screws on the bottom. One of those has come out. That's where that go free. We should be there. It's not too difficult to wrestle the top three. There we go. Remove that for the moment. Oh, quick poke there. Get the, make sure the screws have come out. There we go. There's the other two screws there. So I'm just going to put those just to one side. Okay. So as you can see, this isn't too bad. I've seen these internally covered in muck and rubbish. So yeah, that's not too bad at all. That one. So uh, let's have a look at the pinch roller and the head. So. You can see there, this is the pinch roll. You can see how it has a big, horrible brown sort of thing all the way around it. I don't know if you can see that. If I angle it slightly better, you may be able to see that. There's a big sort of horrible brown mark all the way around it. So we'll be getting rid of that. Uh, the head itself isn't too dirty, but we'll give it a clean up. You can see there's a little bit of dirt on the auto stop there. And the uh, erase head has also got a little bit of dirt on it. So we'll give that a clean up. Um, but the belt, which this on this one actually isn't too bad, although it does have, as you might be able to see, a very, very small kink in it, which is probably obviously that's that's in it because you may or may not be able to see it as I move it through. You can just see a very slight kink. That's because it's been sat for some time in a, in a one place and the belt's obviously old. There's not a lot of tension on there. So there's not going to be all the, the maximum drive from the motor through to the to, to where it's needed. Um, so in order to do that, we're just going to replace the belt. I'm going to grab one of these. Now these belts are available from a company in the UK called CPC. Um, there's the belt number I use, AV belt 111. I'll stick that on the bottom. You'll see it on the bottom of the video as well. Um, they don't cost much. Don't go to someone like Maplin's because they charge about 15 quid for a belt. It's ridiculous. Um, they don't cost very much. And you can buy them direct from CPC. So I'm just going to unscrew this. And the reason I need to take the board off, which you don't normally have to do, the reason I have to take it off is because just move those two screws. It's very, very difficult to get to this here. So let's just remove that. Let's see if we can get a little bit of leeway on there. Don't pull too hard because these cables go through to a little switch at the bottom, but that should give us enough just to get that across. 
Okay, so we've just moved the board off there. I'm going to unscrew this one. Sometimes it needs a little bit of help to come up, so it doesn't actually come up straight away. So if you just leave it that up, there we go. Just pull that up very slightly. It helps the screw come out of the plastic. That's a very long screw. There we go. You can see that. Now you can see, I'll take the belt out in a second. The other thing you need to do is just remove this screw here. Now the whole, fortunately the whole mechanism doesn't fall apart, but if you remove this screw, again, you'll see a washer on there. Be careful if that comes out altogether, not to lose the washer. If you can see that there, you've got a screw and a, and a washer on there. So just be careful not to lose it. Okay, let's put that to one side. And then we can actually unhook unhook the belt from there and unhook it from there and it comes away free now you can see that's not a perfectly round belt there's a big kink in it there so you can see where it's been stood for a long time and the belt is actually worn um, so we'll replace that Keep those out of the way so if you look at that belt you can see it's nice and round nice and rubber uh, nice and stretchy <clears throat> so we'll just carefully place that round underneath the PCB there like that. Sorry, I get my hands out of the way. Hopefully that should sit around there. You need to thread it through. Again, you can see you'll need to thread it through there. You can see that, thread it through the hole there, which is great. We'll hook it on around there. Don't worry if it gets twisted, it'll straighten itself out. And then we'll just see if we can hook the belt around this big plastic wheel there we go hook the belt around there it's not easy to do this without taking the board off completely you don't want to stretch it too much just So literally just hook that up. Now don't worry if it's twisted, it will normally sort itself out. The belt will normally straighten itself out. So it will run fairly smoothly, which is great. So then sit that back on. We'll uh, put the other screw back in the top there so that it... Uh, fabulous. And then again, making sure we've still got the washer on that screw, as you can see there, the washer is there. Just slot that back in. And it should clamp onto that, hopefully. Get the thing lined up, there we go. It'll clamp onto that piece of metal. So it's a little, quite fiddly, but uh, not particularly difficult or taxing. Everything still works, all the eject button, etc. everything still works. We don't need to have this off anymore, so we'll put the things back on okay it's one Number two, just pop it in here now. There we go. So that's the two screws back in. Fabulous. Right, so that's the belt replaced. So it's not too dirty in there, but I'm just going to get my uh, nice soft brush. This is just a normal paintbrush. I'm just going to grab that. Just give it a bit of a brush out. It's not going to hurt anything. Just get rid of any of the crap or dirt which is accumulated in there. As you can see, that's looking a lot better already. And just while I'm here, you can probably see there's some red, uh, some red sort of ad ad adhesive or red sticky stuff, which is um, sat on the side of the head there. That's the head adjustment screw where my finger is there, that one. Um, if you look at that, you can see that that's actually, on this side it's sealed, it's gone right across the screw, but this one's been shifted. Now, that's pretty common on most uh, C2Ns, to be honest. Um, a lot of them have had, obviously over the years, when people can't load tapes or tapes have been in uh, C2Ns which aren't aligned properly, 
um, that movement gets uh, they get, the head gets moved out. So then before you know it, you're out of reference. What I did in order to make a reference tape or get a reference tape is I actually managed to purchase off of eBay um, a brand new old stock C2N. And then all I did was actually record something or record a, um, a sampled tape onto that. Um, which then gave me a reference. So anything really, once that has been recorded, um, anything you can you can use that as a reference to align all the all your other tape decks to. Now you will need to hook this up to a 64 in order to give it some power because we need to get that spinning. We need to get the uh, the caption spinning as well. Uh, the roller drum. We need to get the roller spinning as well um, in order to to, uh, to to roughen it up a little bit. And there we go. See that spinning around nicely there. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is grab my little, grab my little uh, uh, Brillo, Brillo pad cut off and just rub it gently against the head like that. Just to roughen it up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to grab me a, one of these. Got some ISO on it. And then just whilst it's running, Brush it up against there. Now you can see, look at the state, how clean that was, look at the state of it. Just the, all the years of basically magnetic coating coming off the tapes and planting themselves onto the uh, roller there. And as, the, as you get more of those, get more and more and it builds up over the years basically the grip's not as good there's not enough torque there to uh, to drive the tape through at a constant velocity which then can cause you all sorts of problems just using a dry one now I'm putting a fair amount of pressure on there uh, it doesn't seem to be it's not stopping as you can see so I'm pretty happy with that okay so you can see the second time around there's nowhere near as much gunk or horrible stuff coming off of it it's great Oops, good news. Okay, loads of grip there. You may be able to see how much cleaner the roller is as well. Now what I'm going to do is clean the head. Again, just take another cotton, but I don't anticipate a lot of uh, crap coming off this, to be honest. Don't have to have it uh, up and running for this. However, just going to rub the and bud very gently across the head there as you can see and there's not an awful lot coming off because I didn't think it was particularly dirty which is great I'll also just rub across there so again there's a little tiny bit of brown there but not uh, nothing too drastic just for good measure I'm just going to rub the edge off that there's a little bit of dirt across the top there and one I've got Okay, so that's that nice and sorted, which is great. Um, I'll dry the head off, just going to get another cotton bud. Just dry the head off quickly. Fabulous, right. Just now going to grab the bottom of the unit. Sit that in for the moment. Gonna go and grab me my test tape, and uh, and um, we'll uh, I'll show you what the signal looks like on the scope. Just to show you what I was talking about with regard to the head alignment, you can see I've now hooked my scope probe up to um, the tape deck. Um, I've grounded my scope probe here. Uh, I've got a little clip on there which will take the signal front that's coming off the head and relay it to the scope and you can see, you'll be able to see the uh, scope trace as, as we play it back. You'll see what I mean because I'll move the head um, and you'll see the signal get smaller and larger as I move the head up and down. This is what, to, this is what we call the alignment. So I'm just going to start now. Now you can see on the scope screen there that we've actually got a sine wave. That's the beginning sort of lead in for the Commodore's um, uh, for the Commodore's tape signal. Now that's reasonably large at the moment. If you can see, if I twist it one way, as the head goes out of alignment, when the signal comes again, you see how small that signal's got. If I then twist it and bring the head back into alignment, you'll see that the head, the signal gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And what we need to do is tune the tape deck so that the signal is as large as we can get it. I'm just going to turn the time base down there a little bit. So you can now see that that's actually 
fairly large in comparison to when I twisted it out, you could see how small it was. Um, this is actually a, a, a turbo loader, so um, the uh, the signal is quite different. But the the outsides of the uh, the outsides of the signal, right at the very top and bottom, there. So that's quite a strong signal. That's pretty much, I think, in line. Now this is my reference tape that I made from one of the um, uh, from one of, uh, as I said, my reference tape deck. So again, I'll just show you what happens. We tighten it up. Head goes out of alignment. Signal goes completely distorted. 64 is never going to recognise that. As we bring the heads back into alignment. You can see the signal gets bigger. Okay, so that's basically what the head is seeing. That's what the head is reading from the tape. Now this is an analog signal. It gets converted from analog into uh, into digital, actually inside the uh, C2N itself. Um, but just to prove a point, we'll see if we can get that. Uh, see if I can show you that loading. It's actually Alley Cat. It's not particularly exciting, but let's see if we can get it loaded. 